Hello class, uh, in this video I'm just going to show you how to do watercolor technique in Illustrator, steps very similar for Photoshop. Um, we can see here's an example drawing I've shown in other videos where this is meant to be like a watercolor rendering of what this house might look like, uh, but I haven't shown very much detail about how to specifically do that watercolor, so I'll show that from scratch. This is in a generic form so that you can apply it to any drawing that you might like. Now the issue with watercolor, first of all, there's two things. We all know that under effects, under artistic, there's a watercolor effect down here. I don't know. I don't find it to look very much like watercolor myself. Um, and so this has nothing to do, I will not use that effect in here. This is a step process to create my own effect that I think looks like what watercolor looks like. It's not too too long, but there's a few steps. The, the issue with most of these effects and textures is that they're very fine-grained, but watercolor tends to be, you know, has is larger and, and, and somewhat bulbousy and smooth and all these transitions that a lot of the effects don't get to. So I have to I have to go out of my way to sort of get them. Um, even the watercolor effect in in this this effects panel sort of the, has the same same issue. Maybe that's one, one of the is issues to it. There, there are others. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to my drawing here and uh, first I'm going to set it to be a color. So I'll go ahead and set it to a green good color green there we go and the first thing I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna go to my first I'm gonna go to my appearances because I make sure I'm just doing this on the fill um, I will come back to the stroke later for now I'll just leave it as, as black what we do is we're gonna go to the effects and the key to doing watercolor I find is that you have to go to texture and the texture you want to do I know it doesn't make sense, took me a while to figure out, is stained glass. And the reason that I'm going with stained glass is because we can see that it creates these cell sizes. So the t texture, I can, I can control the cell si size texture as I want. So I'm able to control the size of this texture through this cell size control bar uh, right here. And so I have some settings put in here. This, this definitely will uh, change based on the size of your drawing and scale and all these other issues. But this is how you get this different texture. Border thickness one, it's as small as it can go. I'm going to deal in later steps how to get rid of this border because clearly I don't want that. So that's the, the second, second technique. And I do like to add some lighting in here so we can see how that lighting effect happens because it starts to change the color across this pattern. We'll look at other ways of doing it. So I'll just say, okay, okay, there we go. It's still. I know, it doesn't look like watercolor yet. There's a couple more steps. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply an effect to this that uh, begins to get rid of those black lines. So I'm going to go to effects. Uh, I've used different ones in the past. I'm going to use palette knife to do that today. And we can see because it almost blurs it out so much that it um, the black, the lines, the gray lines just sort of go away. So um, so that looks pretty good. If I change this to one, uh, very minor changes. I don't know that it really mattered. So I'll just say OK. And we'll let this render. Here we go. So it's getting closer. It still still has some issues with it. Um, I'm, I'm going to do another effect here, which I don't always do again, but sometimes it just enhances it a little bit. I'm going to go to Ocean Ripple um, to sort of blur the, the edges between these colors a little bit more. We can see how the, the colors are sort of bleeding together more than in, than in palette knife there. So um, I'll change some settings here. Again, any of these settings are sort of free to, to play with. I really, if I pull this number up, I really start to get the blend between the colors more. So I'll say, say OK with that. And then the result of Ocean Ripple is a little bit stipply <coughs> in that case. So I can, I have to, fix that then with this last of the primary effects which I'm going to go to blur I'm going to go to Gaussian blur and uh, just blur the um, stipples right out of it and we'll go with that and we'll say that's a pretty good basic watercolor technique. Um, now I'm going to do a few more things to this to edit it in a variety of ways, but as a basic technique, it's stained glass and it's at least palette knife. These other ones just do subtle things to it and they you can experiment with them as you go. I'm going to start by changing the stroke. A lot of times when you do watercolor, there's actually a light pencil line that's left. So if I go to like a, a medium gray maybe and even make that somewhat transparent um, here, just to give it sort of a pencil-ish effect. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. There we go now. It sort of, sort of looks like pencil. 
Um, another thing that you might do right now, the reason why, one of the reasons why I say I like stained glass is because it produces this bright spot in the center and it changes the color from almost the white to the green to the edge. But you know, um, that's also, it's so very centralized. So another s slight enhancement to this would be to come and change the color from a solid color to a gradient. Now, of course, standard default, which is going to happen, is going to turn it black and white um, at first. So good thing I saved my color. Let me pull my gradient out here so we can get this. I have my swatch color saved up here because I can pull this in here. Pull that black one away. It's of course going to render ow, every time. Got an extra dot in there I didn't want. Pull that out. Pull that one away. Just need to take my time. Let these things render as they need to be. Take this green, put it in on this side. Now, I, now right now, I'm I'm doing the gradient, and it is literally becoming the same color. That's just because I want the two colors to be related. So, I'm gonna take this one here, and I'm gonna select uh, this guy. Just double click on him. I'm gonna go to HSB up here, and I'm just gonna make this one a lighter version of itself. So, something around there, right? So there we go. And now I can go to my gradient control and sort of gradiate it whichever way I want to. I probably shouldn't have done it that way because I'm putting uh, an important color change in the underneath the southern one. So maybe if I go this way, it'll become a little more clear. There we go. So we can see now it's now it's sort of not fading just from the center. And you can play with those colors, play with the gradients um, as you want. Um, and I'm going to make one little tweak to this because right now the color is still very, it's very light. This process produces, as you can see, a very light sort of watercolor effect, which really might be appropriate, but you might want to darken this up a little bit as well. So as another little tweak to this guy, I can come in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to the object and I'm going to, um, well, I need to make a new fill, actually. So add new fill. And I want the fill to be all the way at the bottom, below the other fill here. Okay. There we go. There we go. And you can and you can see I'm going to make this sort of a I'm going to turn this back into a non gradient fill. I think it just copied what was previously done on that previous one. So turn this into. It's got to render every time. Uh, and of course green I want I'm gonna make it that layer we don't see anything because I have to adju adjust the opacity of that top one there here in a second we're gonna make that fill the same color green perhaps lighter actually same way just a little bit lighter something like that we'll say it'll get there it's getting there okay got that go back to my appearances now I want to change this guy to multiply And now we can see that has darkened that green, but it still has sort of the texture of that watercolor. So, so do you, you, and that was again, it's all because I changed this to multiply and added a green underneath it. And I can adjust, adjust the darkness of this green by adjusting the color of this fill, right? Or I could blend colors together also by doing that. So I'll leave that there because again, all these settings can be done and I can save this in my graphic styles just by pulling it over. Uh, and I'll show you a second one just to show a tweak of color and then how to blend it again on this one. So, so I will go here. Much This is a much better watercolor effect than the one you get from Illustrator. I'm just going to go into the appearances of this one, change it to a blue. I've been working in blue. So you can see if they're, they're two different colors, we can see the effect that it already starts to give, which is a sort of blending of co colors together, which you might have, which is an interesting effect. Um, I could go ahead and change this one to blue as well, just to make this all a blue object. Uh, and then if I want to change it so that these two blend together, I'm just going to select this guy and change the opacity. In this case, I'm actually going to change it, I think, to darken. There we go. So yeah, so there. This effect allows almost the whitish areas to sort of 
bleed through more more clearly there. I think it sort of integrates the two designs, although multiply or something else might work for you. You can try different things. Uh, but there we go. There's a watercolor effect that it can really work in any situation. A few simple steps. It can be done. You change the size of the stained glass cell size to get the texture quality however you want uh, in Illustrator. It works almost identically in Photoshop. Um, so good luck with that. Again, if you have anything else you want me to sort of emulate or try to create, let me know and I'll see what I can do. Thanks.